Skywalker will be recording the Poor Peter Cycle. Three poems written by me and with an imaginary medieval minstrel. Imagine the wandering minstrel eye, except this is a little more serious. And the two wistful songs at the beginning and end, and then of course a jolly one in the middle. It's an old ideal that 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 we deliberately threw out in the early part of the 20th century. The idea that art's supposed to be uplifting, I thought a lot of people said, no, it isn't. <laughs> yes, it is. It's an ivory tower thing where uh, you're alone with your thoughts. Yeah. And you're alone with the with the yeah. pencil and the paper. Pencil and paper. Right. One of the steps that's very important, I think, in composition is giving yourself permission to make a mess, you know, and finding and and finding the mess and getting through it. And I think part of that with with writing by hand is the ability to cross something out or erase it or throw it away or, you know, but that there's an actual physical connection to the work. And a lot of composers take objectify. Um, it's very popular right. to objectify, and for me, the whole idea is subjective thought. Yeah, that particular two bars you can take out of tempo a little bit and freer. Halloween, who knew all the tunes from Can? You don't dum dum dum. Doesn't have to go. The audience wants to hear what I feel about something and how I feel about something. And it's what is that thing I feel about? change in the composers and the audience mm -hmm. and the entire world is changing mm -hmm. because of the internet. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the big It's the a big huge thing. Yeah. difference. Now we can hear everything. Yeah, instantly. Uh, a young composer can have a website, yeah. can have his music played and heard by uh, millions of people. Mm -hmm. Piece. Yeah. 
um, I imagine myself sitting in the audience. And I'm writing it for me sitting in the audience. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it has to work for that. And the audience, I feel, will come along with me if, if I am really part of the experience, that is, as a listener. You know, I think of going back a hundred years, so the, these Italian Neapolitan songs, I don't know who arranged them, Cor and Cor and Grato or Torna Sorrento and stuff. And whoever did it was the world's worst orchestrator. I mean, whoever <laughs> mm -hmm. did all those things. Yeah. So they keep using the same transcriptions. Yeah. They're so gussied up. Yeah. And there's yeah. all kinds of unnecessary yeah. counterpoint. But I on. do find that that is also uh, an age thing, that when you're young, you do write over, you tend to overwrite to, yeah. you know, a lot of, a lot of young composers do yeah, you overwrite. Um, and as you get older, you learn about distillation and economy and that less is actually more. If you are very concise and clear with what you say, Benjamin Britten said the rock began with Beethoven. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that's true because Beethoven did want to reach his audiences mm -hmm. a, lot. a lot. And I think Wagner was the beginning of the God composer. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be thought of as a God mm -hmm. and everybody related to him that way. Mm -hmm. And when you take the psychological implications of being a God, mm -hmm. Actually, if you write music, the audience understands mm -hmm. you're not a god anymore. <laughs> you're a god if you write music that no one understands. Right. And they're in the 20th century. That's a very interesting perspective. I've in the 20th century, I yeah. think there were composers who felt their music was morally superior because mm -hmm. it was written with techniques that the audience could not understand. Of course. Mm -hmm. And that's a 20th, old 20th yeah. century problem. Yep. And in the 21st century, I think the young people they're today reacting against that. Are yeah. totally yeah. against that yeah. and really want to reach their audiences yeah. and shake them up and yeah. make them feel but things. But connect with them. Yeah. That's the whole thing is to connect with your audience. I mean, that definitely is key whenever I'm writing. singers to feel empowered so that they don't feel baffled or confused, so that they feel confident that they can do the music and invest their personality in themselves with confidence and really reach and connect with the audience. I always think of it as a series of vibrations. You have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the initial thought. It's like when you're writing and you're in the zone, it's almost yeah. like you've stepped into a vibration that's always been going and the writing somehow just happens and you get ideas when you have a good idea and you really feel like you're in there. And then if you do your work well, yeah, it vibrates yeah, with, yeah. with the performers. And if they do their work well, suddenly the audience is in on that vibration too. And it's, it's, I, that is to me is the goal, is when you can convey that, you know, and suddenly we're all connected and we're all in the wavelength that you initially felt. Good. Beautiful. Well done. Thank you.